Madam President, I'd like to continue what I began last month by honoring the contribution of our federal employees. On May 4th, I came to the floor to discuss the importance of recognizing the hard work and dedicated service of our federal employees. This is especially important because of our recovery efforts during these challenging economic times. The programs we enact, it's easy to say, will be carried out by a federal workforce that requires people's confidence. I know from personal experience how industrious and trustworthy our civil servants are. The public needs to know, too. As I said then, we also need to encourage more of our graduates to enter careers in public service. America is blessed with so many enthusiastic and entrepreneurial students and citizens. We need them to lend their talents. We need their ideas, their creative minds. This is why I've made it a priority to honor excellent public servants and call attention to what federal employees can and do accomplish. In my previous remarks, I promised to highlight some of our excellent public servants from this desk every so often. In keeping with my promise, I rise today to speak about two federal employees whose achievements are particularly relevant to our work here in this session, the current state of our health care system. As many know, cervical cancer is the second most common cause of cancer deaths in women worldwide. It takes the lives of almost a quarter of a million women each year. Here in America, nearly 11,000 women are diagnosed annually. What distinguishes cervical cancer from most other cancers is its cause. While many cancers are linked to a genetic predisposition for abnormal cell growth, nearly all cases of cervical cancer result from viral infections. The majority of these infections come from exposure to the human papilloma virus, or HPV. HPV is, most common, is the most common sexually transmitted disease affecting Americans. When Dr. Douglas Lowy and Dr. John Schiller began studying HPV, little did they know that their 20-year partnership as researchers would lead to the development of a vaccine. Working at the National Institute of Health, National Center Institute Center for Cancer Research, the two discovered that previous attempts at creating a vaccine had failed because a genetic muta mutation exists in the virus, making it difficult for the body to produce antibodies against it. Once doctors Lowy's and Schiller made this finding, they worked to create a modified version of the HPV without the mutation. This development was instrumental in the creation a few years ago of a vaccine that will prevent the vast majority of cervical cancer cases from developing. Because over 80% of those who develop cervical cancer cases live in developing nations, doctors Lowy and Schiller have been working with the World Health Organization to make the HPV vaccine available to women around the world. In recognition of their achievement, the two men jointly were awarded the 2007 Service to America Federal Employee of the Year Medal. Today, women and girls aged 9 through 26 have the ability to be vaccinated against developing cervical cancer. Once again, I call my fellow senators to join me in honor Dr. Lowy's and Dr. Schiller and all federal employees who've distinguished themselves in the service of our nation.